Hi, it's Phil from TeachBlend, and in this video we're going to look at Microsoft Whiteboard and Teams together. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a staff guide to how we can use this for teaching and learning. So we'll look at how to activate Whiteboard in Microsoft Teams, but also open up the app inside of Microsoft Teams to give you more features and functionality, such as being able to annotate diagrams and use templates for mind maps. We'll also look at how we can introduce a second device such as an iPad or a Surface to actually be able to use that one as a drawing tablet and more. So I hope you find this video useful and if you do, please remember to like and subscribe to TeachBlend, it really does help. As you can see here, I'm in a meeting with some students and I'm just going to click the share button and then choose whiteboard. This will open up the whiteboard on your device and also on students as read only. When you are then writing, the students will see this live on their screens as well. And you can see this on the iPad on the bottom right. You can use things such as the eraser to remove any mistakes and different colors. And you can also use the pan and zoom tool to move around the whiteboard to zoom into various elements and more. You can also use the text button and that will allow you to use your keyboard to insert information into the whiteboard for students to see. And you can edit this and delete them as well. Let's have a look a little bit more detail on the teacher side and you'll see on the right hand side here some more options and one of these is the post-it note and the post-it note allows you to essentially insert post-its and you can use this for activities. So here I'm going to ask my students if they prefer tea or coffee. What I'm going to then do is I'm going to go to the settings menu and turn on participants can now edit and what this will do is it will enable the toolbar at the top as you can see on the iPad. And this will work for all of your students in the meeting. They are then able to contribute to that whiteboard and contribute to the activity that you have set, as you can see here. What I'm now going to do is look at some more options inside of whiteboard. So I'm just going to go back to my teacher mode. And in here, you'll be able to export the whiteboard if you wanted to save it as a PNG, for example. But you're also able to open up the whiteboard app if you have it installed. And this provides some more information and resources that you can use on your whiteboard. So again, you can use the pen tool, but this time, if you click, you're able to do things such as make the pen thinner and more. You're also able to use different colors and students are still able to contribute to this whiteboard. You're able to use things such as a highlighter and again, change the color and use these. And you can use the eraser. If you double tap, you can also clear the canvas. Here you'll see that I'm also now using a ruler and I can use this for angles and more. Another option you can do is if you've got a multiple text and you want to select some, you can use the lasso tool to select individual areas and then you can move these, delete them and edit the options that you've done rather than just erase. So for example, changing the color. Another couple of options that you can use is the eraser tool um, individually as well and also the text tool just like you have done previously. We're just going to have a look now at post-it notes in a bit more detail. And this time in the app, you're able to change the color, like and unlike posts, so students can actually like on these and more. If you click the image button, this provides you with some information where you can actually upload images that you could use to annotate, for example. So here I've got a PC and uh, some components, and I can use this to annotate to show students and they can contribute as well. A top tip to make your text more legible is if you select it, you can use the ink beautification tool to make this look a little bit more effective and nice. And I really like this feature. Let's have a look now at a few more things that you can do. So I'm going to clear my canvas and I'm just going to click the plus button now and you'll see various options such as note grid, lists, Bing images, text, etc. Let's have a look at note grid. That essentially puts a grid of notes. List allows you to create lists and follow-ups allows you to create follow-ups that you can assign to various people. You can also use templates and PDFs as well. So here I'm going to upload a PDF and on this I'm going to use an exam spec. And this is really effective because what it does is it allows you to annotate this and highlight it for students. In settings you can also insert things such as active pen and ink to shape. So what happens here is when I draw a shape, it will automatically realign. 
You can also create tables by drawing a square and a line, and this will allow you to create tables effectively and quickly, which is great for things such as maths and true or false, etc. Let's have a look now at the background. And again, in here, you can change various backgrounds, put in things such as canvas colors and more. You can also click on the settings icon to start exporting this whiteboard for students. So here on the right hand side, you can click settings and you can do things such as export this whiteboard to an image to upload to a VLE. You can also send it to your class one notebooks and distribute this to students or put it in collaboration. And you can also do things such as post it to your class teams as well. So this is really useful to give to students to allow them access to the whiteboard. Another thing you can do is also click on the roster, which allows you to invite various people into that to actually edit the whiteboard. And you can also change their permissions as well to manage students access individually or as a class. Another thing you might want to do is actually use whiteboard in an iPad. So what you can do is you can join using a secondary device. So if you haven't got a touchscreen device, you can use your iPad as a secondary device as the whiteboard. So here, for example, what I am doing is actually using a normal computer without touchscreen and my iPad as a secondary device to edit the whiteboard and use the pen tool. I hope you found this video useful, and if you do, please remember to like and subscribe to TeachBlend, it really does help. Thank you.